So we have a, a launch by the wonderful Hazel Edwards and a bit of a talk from Suzanne and Serena is going to do a bit of a demonstration and show you her wonderful art for the book. And then we're going to have a few words from Catherine Norton from uh, Variety. And then of course mass signings and the authors are going to be only too happy to sell and uh, sign about a hundred books to you. <laughs> so, first up, please welcome the wonderful Hazel Edwards. technologically challenged. I've just been helped now to make the print bigger or else I can wear my glasses. One or the other. I'm delighted to take part in the launch of this book. Uh, partly because the launch of a book is a bit like a birth of the baby. You know, it's, it, it's a book baby. And I was thinking with the analogy that obviously we know who the parents are. <laughs> These two here. The genetic strain of the, Suzanne uh, and Serena. But I was, I was just thinking where the others fit in. Whether I don't think I'd call Paul Collins of Ford Street the obstetrician. I don't think that's quite right. But I think the publisher is extremely important in, in the connection. So um, this is the birth clinic of an idea here in the library. Um, so these are the author and the illustrator. They're the parents of the verbal and the visual um, with the subtext. Just let me bring this together so I can actually read it. Um, of a genetic inheritance, so I was really getting carried away with this. Um, but I think Gracie and Josh is a very joyful book, and that's the important thing. And I think the image of the girl in her spider outfit is just such a wonderfully joyful image that has been presented, and I know it has in part been based on um, Susie's own family life. And this is one of the aspects of this book that I think makes it uh, so important, that you've got a combination of talents here. You've got the visual talents of Serena. And it occurred to me that a book that's called Grace, and Serene, you've got Serene and Grace, <laughs> gracefully drawn in the whole book. There must be a connection. I couldn't do anything with Susie, sorry. <laughs> I do anything about that. But I thought it was conceived with love and passion rather than lust. And it's social justice, but it's not propaganda. And I think this is the real strength. Of it. It's a joyful story. And to me, the theme or the DNA thread, I was trying to make it fit, uh, it is really the sibling love and affection. It's a family story and that's what it's about and underneath you've got the subtext of the issue of cancer of the boy. Um, so it's a marriage of Serena's illustration, Susie's words. Um, I know that Serena are trained as a Disney artist because I did read the back on the blurb and I looked up all your things as well but I like to go on what's there and what I thought was such a great strength was the juxtaposing of some of the um, uh, illustrations particularly the difference between the good day and the bad day and I thought that was a crux of the book I thought that was really important because it was dealing with the issues underneath so um, and the ones with Josh in bed Susie, everybody knows about Susie, um, but I'd like to say that um, I think the compassion that comes through from Susie's own experiences of cancer and family life and her generosity of spirit in helping other colleagues, um, in a long writing life, you can't fake it in your books. You've really got to feel what you put in there, and I think that is the strengths of um, Susie's writing. Um, I think her earlier subject was like the Burns subject with the butterflies book and ships in the field, and I am Jack and the bullying and so on. But this one, I think, has a much wider application because it's the sort of book that can be given as a gift. Um, gift of ideas, but gift to any family um, that has siblings, which takes care of most of them, um, or a family that is involved in hospital visits for cancer. And it's a possibility to talk indirectly about the issues. And I think that's what makes it such a significant book. Back to the birth process. Um, the book baby, they always say it's got its parents' eyes. Well, I thought the vision behind this book was important and the shape of the story structure was extremely well done. I think Susie should take some credit for that. So um, I've mentioned the obstetrician uh, and I would like to pay credit uh, 
to Paul because I think Ford Street is a very significant publisher in that they're prepared to support a range of projects, uh, literary projects, and and take a risk on on a number of authors and illustrators and support them extensively. And I'd like to pay credit to that. And also to Variety, but Variety is going to talk in a moment themselves. Um, and I think that is also, so I thought the relevance of the subject matter for many of the client supporters of, 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 of Variety was so important. I think Variety is such a good name. Well, I think I'm probably the midwife. <laughs> um, and in a sense, it's time for this book, Baby, to go out on its own. But I did think that the DNA, I couldn't get anything to fit DNA, the DNA um, of the double helix uh, blending together um, meant that it, the subtext is really the cancer challenge for a family. And I think the real importance of this book is how fiction can be used to initiate discussion indirectly about concerns others may have within a family. But it's fun, right? It's a joyous book and that's why you can give it as a gift. Um, now in terms of naming the book baby, I have to say Susie knows what I thought of the title first off. I, I said that. I was wrong. Susie. Yes, I accept that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grace, Gracie and Josh is a great title. The grace with which the girl character plays with her brother. You were right. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. Well named. And also it's a very popular name for children, which is a good point. Um, but I thought in, on consideration of the title that the most important thing was the word and between the two and it's about the siblings together. So, I pay credit to these. I think in terms of, um, Paul's gonna give me the wind up signal in a moment. A birth certificate. The birth certificate is the book over there that can be signed by the author and illustrator. And maybe it's time for this book to work on its own. It was an egg of an idea and now it's become an adult. But I also think it might walk a bit further. I think this one's got the potential, perhaps in terms of performance for a play or puppetry, uh, particularly because of the Gracie character. Um, and I think it, it has filmic qualities as well. So I see it walking on its own two pages or whatever you want to make the analogy to be. <laughs> so I would like to launch this book, Baby, and pay credit to the creators. Thank you very much, Hazel, for fantastic uh, launch speech. And now we will have the creators. <laughs> I almost beat you to that. <laughs> Away you go. Please welcome Suzanne and uh, Serena. really beautiful Hazel. Nothing, I could expect nothing less. And I'd like to say hello to all my friends and all those people who will become my friends and Serena's. I'd like to just begin by saying this particular project is joyous because Serena is a wonderfully joyous illustrator. But really it is very close to my heart. Variety approached me actually, did you know this? Variety approached me <laughs> to say that they wanted to reach kids and families through story. That's just my up my alley, that's what I like to do. And the thing is that it is a joyous book. It's about how kids, brothers and sisters and families, but especially siblings, take the joy out of each day. It doesn't matter what the challenges are. This is the day we're celebrating. I have to say that my background is um, educational, as a consultant, and I've got it, whatever, I've done lots of work in this area. Families which face, which have kids who have got special needs, illness, special challenges, the parents are amazing and they struggle every day to get to the hospital and they struggle to, you know, make their family work and every day is really exhausting. And sometimes the families, the parents who do nothing else than work for haven't got yet. Yeah, well I didn't trust it. You know what, they're doing it for their families because their families are wonderful and sometimes they lose the way. 
Sometimes they feel anger and guilt and exhaustion for the families they're working for day and night. And the kid who faces illness or sickness or challenge or disability, they themselves get confused. They're the centre of the world but not, you know, what is happening in their lives. Their parents are there for them but not. And the siblings often get marginalised. And you know what? There becomes, you know, everyone says you've got to communicate. Well, you know, it's easy to say, hard to do. These families love each other. These families are working to make their lives whole as best as possible. And they're often broken by miscommunications and unspoken emotions. Jumping into a book like Gracie, with its joy, with the true issue of life, which is brothers and sisters. They, they support each other. They play. They, they can be filmmakers, whatever. Having a book like that where the parent's still in there. You know what? That mother who does everything for her children, she sits there beside her children and they suddenly will talk. And the guilt and the anger goes. And it's a time when she can put her arms around her kids and they suddenly know it's okay. It actually is a form of real communication and it changes their world. I've seen too many families who just, they just work tirelessly to make the unit work and the communication is broken. You know what? New story, jump in, have that time and they will tell you amazing things and there'll be so much healing. The other thing is with this book, which was so deeply important to me, a child who is ill or sick or disabled, they are never a victim. They have so much to give. In Gracie and Josh, Josh, he helps his sister every day. He initiates play and they celebrate. And Gracie, his sister, every day she supports Josh and helps them. And that's the, that's the actual fabric of family and relationships. So while you may take this book and read it and say, okay, it's fun, it's about kids and filmmaking, Gracie being a great spider, it's much more for those who want to be on that journey. For those who need it, the subtext is there. And variety, the amazing variety who initiated this journey, it is my privilege and pleasure to work with their, with Variety on this. And already there have been responses where kids are reading and rereading the book and they don't know why they feel better and parents feel better. I write for children for a very specific reason. I actually can write for adults and do when I'm in a weak moment. <laughs> but I write for children because they are such different readers to us. They're reading for meaning. They're reading for succour. They're reading to find out who they're going to be. And if they love your book, if it touches them, they will read it many, many times and it will travel with them into adulthood. And what a privilege that is. And that is the basis of this book. But I'm always a storyteller and you can never reach that core until you enter into the story, enable them to emotionally engage. And I was very grateful that Serena Geddes, who has all the joy that Gracie and Josh has, was able to also bring in that huge emotional core of sibling love and family and support. And thank you for that. <laughs> so we had a launch in Sydney and it kind of, I kind of cried a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. Sure, everyone cried apparently. <laughs> and, um, and I was saying to everyone, I even practiced in front of the mirror, so, and that still didn't help. I haven't practiced in the mirror this morning, so I'm going to try and wing it and not get nervous. Um, um, one of the things, thank you to Ford Street for giving me the opportunity um, to do Suzanne's book. I know Suzanne pitched for me to do this, um, to do Gracie and Josh. And I saw I saw the editor snuck in, Nikki. Oh. <laughs> she was a massive help and um, probably got a few stern, grumpy illustrator tone words from me when she said, can you change this? And I'm like, what? <laughs> you don't like it, but um, so yeah, it was quite. It was a you know an interesting little project. Um, 
Firstly, Charles was going to say, um, with Suzanne, I, she actually asked me if I'd want to illustrate uh, Gracie and Josh, and I said yes without actually reading the manuscript. And um, as I said in Sydney, who could say no to you? So, um, <laughs> and uh, when I got Gracie and Josh and I read the text, um, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't quite understand it. I didn't get it, um, and I really struggled with the book. Um, to be completely honest. It was very challenging and everyone likes a challenge, I certainly do like a challenge, but um, it was dealing with something that I didn't know a lot about and um, it wasn't until I met Grace and um, David from Variety and I heard about what they do for all sorts of children um, and I started to sort of see where the story was going and um, I was also able to um, get to, into the Sydney Children's Hospital and I offered my services doing some workshops there for free just so I could spend some time with the children and, and be around families and it's um, it's quite an eye-opening experience especially when you uh, sort of shut yourself off from that you know it, I mean if it's not around you you just take it for granted you don't see it and once I, once I was in there I really could see what families were going through and it was quite um, challenging oh. <laughs> okay, change the subject. So, I do drawings. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to try and do with Gracie and Josh as well, I, um, I don't know, Marjorie's here, I know she's an illustrator, and Laura would over there illustrate as well. Um, have you ever tried drawing short kids without eyebrows? It's really hard, because so much of the expression, especially for me, is in the eyebrows um, and, you know, the facial features. So, I had to actually start working with different things and using Josh's body language um, and then try to exaggerate um, emotion by colour, um, which I hadn't done before. But with some of the some of the pages, like whenever he's sick, um, you know, all sad or whatever, there was like a lot of blues and purples, sort of cold colours. And then when he was happy and Gracie was in her suit, I always tried to, um, you know, put her in like yellows and warmer colours. So uh, Gracie and Josh was a very challenging book, um, but seeing it all come together and. Um, I think that's been such a great project and Suzanne's been a huge support. Um, she had me crying on the phone a lot. Actually, I think I just cried and she was trying to cheer me up. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you can do this. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, looking at the finished product and seeing the response, especially in Sydney as well, from, from the children and everyone there and from Variety, it's definitely been a project that um, I'm really glad I, I, I did. So, um, And I'd like to just say, that for me as an author with Fort Street, the absolute sheer pleasure of working so closely with Paul and Meredith and Nikki has been a really extraordinary experience. I've never done picture books before and I really think that um, you certainly um, guided me in this very new form of writing and I love it. I love it. <laughs> and I hope that you all are going to support Variety, support this book, support Paul Collins, and most importantly, <laughs> realise this is true original design by Serena. This is Gracie Spider. Isn't it cute? Oh. And it'll be part of the um, books today. I hope you love her. And I hope you love this book. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks guys, great collaboration, the book and speeches. And now we're going to have a few words from the lovely Catherine Norton from Variety, the children's charity. Thank you. Thank you firstly to Serena and Susan. Um, I certainly love the book. Um, we've sent it out um, to quite a few families already. Um, and while we haven't received responses back yet, we certainly know that um, they were very grateful to receive it. So, um, when helping children who are sick, disadvantaged or of special needs, Variety often has to take into consideration all the members of the family, um, not necessarily just the individual child uh, with the special needs. And it's interesting what you were just saying, Susan, because I spoke to a family just this week and I thought I'd share with you that story because it's very fitting in terms of the sibling relationship. Uh, we, know, we know a little girl named Taylor. Uh, she's five years old. She started school three weeks ago. Taylor is a social butterfly. She plays with her older sister, Jenna, jokes with her mum and dad, and reads books. She loves music and travelling in the car with her mum. Taylor is growing up, 
currently learning to eat with a knife and fork, walk independently and dress herself. She attends special needs school this year. However, Taylor is yet to develop her speech. She simply can't talk. Variety granted her an iPad to assist her communication. We recently received this update from her mum. She's really comfortable with the iPad now. She can touch a button on her communication app to request something, like a family member. Taylor's older sister, Jenna, has provided all the voices for these buttons. So when she presses them, she hears Jenna's voice to ask for what she wants. Jenna and I have made an enormous library of signs that Taylor knows to help her carers, teachers and therapists understand Taylor's vocabulary. We've made over 130 video clips of Jenna signing each word and then Taylor attempting them too. <laughs> Variety provide over $1 million to children each month that fed to families that could relate and benefit from Gracie and Josh. Like us, this story addresses the bigger picture and provides comfort to all family members like Jenna and Taylor's parents. I know, I know. <laughs> Okay, thanks to everyone for giving those rousing speeches, <laughs> your thoughts on the book, etc. And thank you, Catherine, for coming along and telling us more about the variety. Okay, um, right now we have a wonderful cake. Maybe we should get Serena and uh, Suzanne to cut the cake. Oh, yes. Yes. And then everyone's welcome to a piece of cake. And they will also then be signing books. The uh, Gracie soft toy is available with each copy of the book. So if you bought a book and you haven't got a copy of the soft toy, feel free to grab one. Thanks so much for the book.